This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. And just like that, suddenly we have no more NHL and NBA to talk about for this year outside of their respective drafts. And it's kind of sad, but congrats to the Denver Nuggets and the Vegas Golden Knights on their championships. And I guarantee the voices we had on here talking about those respective sports, we'll still sprinkle them in throughout the summer because I selfishly want to keep talking to them. So uh, if you Feel free to be on the lookout for Austin Swaim, Tom Vecchio, Austin Cass, all the guys who got us through soccer, NBA, NHL, all throughout the uh, the spring as well, because I'm going to bring them back here on the show to talk about some other stuff. But I think the one plus side here is now baseball can shine. And I love betting on baseball, love talking money lines, strikeout props and stuff like that. And we can lean fully into that, talk some NASCAR, talk some Formula One. So hope is not lost throughout the summer NFL talk coming up as well. So still a lot of good stuff coming up here on the show, despite the fact there is no more NBA and NHL starting with today. We're talking some major league baseball. I'll go through two money lines and three strikeout props. I lock. And then I will also talk, take talk some formula one in Montreal to preview this weekend's race. Welcome on into covering the spread. That's right here on the FanDuel podcast network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a, senior writer and analyst for number fire here to take you through today's mlb slate over at fanduel.com and also get you ready for formula one in montreal if you're looking for a pga uh preview for the u.s open you can get that in the the covering the spread podcast feed right now we talked to brandon gadula yesterday broke down outrights talked scotty scheffler talked uh which of the studs he's targeting as far as uh their favorite the outrights and also some prop betting brandon likes for this year's us open find that wherever you get your podcast by searching for covering the spread or go over to the fanduel youtube page as it is up over there and also fanduel tv plus the fanduel tv plus app you can now find uh covering the spread there each day as well to get your covering the spread uh, needs in. We'll break down some baseball here in just one second. But first, baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's up to $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss your chance to snag a no-sweat first bet up to what. $2,500 $2,500 when you join FanDuel today. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager, only $10 deposit required. Refund issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1 877 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y. And in West Virginia, go to 1 800 Gambler.net. Pretty big slate across Major League Baseball for today. As mentioned, got two money lines, three strikeout props I like based on the odds over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's begin things off with the money lines. That is between the Blue Jays and the Orioles. I like the Orioles money line, which is currently minus 102 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The implied odds of minus 102 are 50.5%. My model is the Orioles at 55% to win. And that's largely, I think, due to some continued skepticism around Jose Barrios because Barrios, if you look at the results page for him has been much better recently, super slow start to this year, rough last year as well. But then recently things have ticked back up. And I think part of that is sticky because Barrios has done a very good job of suppressing hard contact in that sample. And that's a skill. It is something you can definitely sustain and continue over a longer run. So part of what he has done is legit and probably going to stick around, but the plate discipline numbers for Barrios still not quite there. 
And he's now going on the road to face a lefty heavy lineup. Uh, obviously losing Ryan Mountcastle stinks for the O's, but like he wouldn't be a big factor in this game anyway, because I want as many lefties against Barrios as possible. And the O's now in their current construction are going to have a lot of them. Even with no Mountcastle, even with no Mullins, the Orioles still have a respectable 102 WRC plus against righties on the current active roster. So they're not fully depleted. I would prefer that those guys were there personally, but it's not as if it's a bare cabinet with his offense anymore. So looking at this matchup, the Orioles are at home, minus 102 money line kind of says that uh, the Jays, the better team on a neutral field, which I think is probably correct, but uh, 55%, actually, I guess I would actually have the Orioles favorite on a neutral field to five them at 55% to win. Either way, I think the O's undervalued at minus 102. So I will take them there as a quality bet to start things off for Wednesday. Other money line for me is in a later game, and that's the Diamondbacks taking on the Phillies. I've like I like the Diamondbacks minus uh, 132 on their money line right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. There has been some money coming in on the Phillies because this was minus 142 earlier on this morning. So keep that in mind. Check out the market once you hear this. Go to see if this market has continued to move against uh, a move in favor of the Phillies, because if it has me, you can hold off and bet Arizona later on. But I would want to take Arizona at some point because I think this market should not be moving drastically this way. My model is Arizona pretty well above this. The implied odds are 56.9% at minus 132. I've got them above 60%. And a lot of that's because I buy into what Merrill Kelly has done this year. He's added more strikeouts to his game without fully sacrificing the quality bat of ball that he's had for a very long time. We talked about this with Rob Freeman pitching Ninja back on Friday, where he was saying, you know, with this coaching staff, he expects Kelly to continue to prioritize strikeouts. Didn't get a ton of those Friday, but if you can prevent balls in play entirely, that's going to be better than keeping hard contact in check. And Kelly has still been okay in the batted ball department. So more strikeouts, still fine as far as the batted ball stuff goes. I think that's a, a great trade-off for sure. The Phillies offense, about average. Uh, they're uh, 103 WRC plus against righties, so a little bit above average. Definitely not a plus matchup, but the Diamondbacks have done pretty well against lefties so far this year. I went into this year expecting them to struggle there, but the numbers so far have actually been pretty good. So maybe this could be a spot where Rangers Suarez struggles a bit. So I wouldn't have expected to be on Arizona here, given that the Phillies were a team my model liked a lot coming into this year, and Arizona was not as high. Um, may have been a bit above market on them, but not super, super high. So a bit surprised to be here, but I do like Arizona. Again, make sure you check the market later on, because... If this continues to shift towards the Phillies, you may be able to get Arizona at a better number later. So I don't think this is one you necessarily need to take right now. When you're listening to this, you don't need to go get Arizona wherever they're at. If they're still at minus 132, they've held steady there for a bit. Maybe you take them then. But I just keep an eye on this market. I would want to add Arizona at some point because I do think that they are undervalued in this matchup. But it is worth noting the market has disagreed as of right now. So... Check out that one, see where it's at. But the Orioles at minus 102, definitely one I want to get to for tonight. So Orioles minus 102, and then the Arizona money line, minus 132 currently. Very okay with that. I'd be okay with it about to minus 140 or so, or 145 or so. I think that's the point where I'd say I'm okay not, not adding this one to the uh, bet slip there. As far as strikeout props, I actually want to go back to that Orioles game. And talk about the first one here. That is Kyle Bradish. He is the starter for the Orioles for tonight. His strikeout prop at FanDuel Sportsbook is currently at four and a half. And the over is plus 106. I feel really good about that number. And do you want to add Bradish over four and a half at plus 106? Bradish, for me, is projected at 5.2 strikeouts tonight. And he's up there thanks to a shift he has made recently. Where he's been throwing his slider more often. And... If you go to baseball savant, look at his uh, his whiff rate by pitch. That is his highest whiff pitch. And in the first four starts for Bradish this year, he did not throw the pitch more than 20.5% in any game. He was under 20% in three of those first four starts. But across his past seven, his total usage on his slider is 33.7%. So way up from where it was earlier on this year. Across those seven starts, Bradish has gone over four and a half strikeouts in four of seven games, including two of his three starts in Baltimore, which is where they're at for tonight. So he's facing the Jays. That's obviously not a matchup I seek out super often, but Bradish has been getting more strikeouts recently. 
I do like the Orioles money line, which does uh, correlate with this bet as well. So I think Brad is undervalued. I don't, again, typically go towards same game parlays just because I need to like multiple legs in the same game. I do happen to like multiple legs in the same game. So if you decide to parlay these two together, the uh, the odds at FanDuel Sportsbook are plus 252. I probably prefer to do them individually personally. That is, again, personal preference based on the way I like to play things. So not going to go that route personally. But if you want to go there, if you want to get some same game parlay stuff in, I do think that is, is viable. For me, I will make them separate bets. Bradish over four and a half plus 106 and the Orioles money line at minus 102. Another strikeout prop for tonight. Let's go out to the West Coast and talk about Tyler Glass now. Glass now is facing the A's and... Obviously, that's a spot we're going to love because we would expect class now to dominate that offense, go deep in the game and potentially rack up a good number of strikeouts. But his strikeout prop accounts for that pretty fully because under eight and a half for glass now is currently minus 116 at FanDuel. And I think that we should take the under in that one. This is not a bet against glass now as a pitcher because he is looking great so far. He's been phenomenal in his first three starts and we know what he has done before his injuries as well. So overall, we love glass now super into him. Just this number is really high for a guy who has not gone over 90 pitches yet. He has not hit 90 pitches yet either. His strikeout totals across the first three starts, eight, six, and six. And you know, this is a high strikeout matchup. It's a bad offense. It's a bad park for hitting as well, which does help glass now. But it's still a really big number for a guy who is still potentially ramping back up from an injury. Also, you think about the Rays and their situation. I know they've lost two straight to this exact Oakland team, but they're thinking long term. They want to make sure that they are a fully healthy, firing all, on all cinders, cylinders team in October. And Glass now is a key part of that. So I don't expect them to toss him out there for 95 pitches for tonight. And I think that's kind of where you need him to be in order to get a... Uh, strikeout projection this high so i think glass now under eight and a half is scary i think it is not enjoyable to bet against tyler glass now because it's so fun to have him back in our lives especially in this matchup with the a's but i do think this is the right way to go from a a betting perspective so glass now under eight and a half minus 116 the next one i want to add one final strikeout prop going to the Reds and the Royals game. I was on this game in DFS last night from a stacking perspective. We're going to talk about a pitcher here, which is a fun deviation. And that pitcher has been really good so far this year. Not sure how sustainable it is, but I like Ben Lively over four and a half strikeouts at minus 112 right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Lively has made five starts so far, and I went into those starts with pretty low expectations. But he has been crushing so far. He's had at least five strikeouts and all five starts. His strikeout rate is 27.3%. If you look at the swing and strike rate on Lively, it does say that he's likely going to come back to earth a bit. But that may not happen here because he's facing a Royals active roster with a 25.7% strikeout rate against righties this year. So it's another plus matchup for Lively. Even though it's on the road, I'm not sure we necessarily see the the hot streak for lively end tonight so this could like the glass now bet wind up looking very foolish but i do think that it is the right way to go and i think we should have interest in lively until either he regresses or the market adjusts up a bit more on lively so i think over four and a half minus 112 is a good way to go there so the strikeout props for tonight, Ben Lively over four and a half minus 112, Tyler Glasnow under eight and a half minus 116, Kyle Bradish over four and a half at plus 106, all those numbers again over at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's going to wrap up baseball for today, but let's talk about some Formula One. Obviously, no NASCAR to discuss this week because they are on uh, their lone off week of the entire year. Luckily, we do have Formula One in North America. They're up in Montreal and Canada for the Canadian Grand Prix, and if you look at the top of the odds board, I feel like it's pretty appropriate accounting for the gains Mercedes made in Barcelona, accounting for, I would expect, a bit of a bounce back for Aston Martin because it couldn't quite uh, show any value on Fernando Alonso to podium, which I thought I might, but not quite there yet. So top of the board to me is pretty efficient. If you're looking for value in this race, I want to take out, uh, check out the points market to finish inside the top 10. And the best bet there to me is is on Yuki Sonoda. Now, Sonoda at FanDuel Sportsbook is 2-1, to one, uh, plus 200. You can get plus 225 elsewhere. So, as always, shop around. But I will say, if 200 is or plus 200 is the best you can get, I am also showing value at that number, personally. 
the reason that I'm showing value in Yuki is that he's been weirdly steady this year. He's been to start his, his F1 career a bit erratic, uh, volatile for sure. But this year he's been steady, kind of the team leader now for Alpha Tauri, despite the fact he is younger than the two drivers between him, him and Nick DeVries. He's been like their team leader so far. Across seven races, Yuki has two top tens. So that's a 29% rate that is under the implied odds at two to one, under the implied odds at plus 225 as well. So based on the first seven races, this would be a bad bet. But Yuki has finished 11th in three others. So he's been 11th or better in three in, um five out of seven races. He finished 12th in Barcelona, but he also had a time penalty there. If you look at the order in which drivers cross the line, Sonoda was actually the 10th driver to cross the line there, just didn't get credited with it because of the penalty. Now, obviously, penalties are there for a reason, so it's not like I should count that as being a top 10, but he's been hovering around this range all year long, and he's been in contention for a top 10 pretty much every week so far this year, even if he hasn't gotten credited with that finish. The race pace for Sonoda has been trending up as well. If you look at his median lap time last week or two weeks ago in Barcelona, that was the best it has been this year relative to the field all year long. Sonoda ranked 13th in overall form for me entering this race. If you look beyond the top five teams, so uh, Aston Martin, Red Bull, Mercedes, Ferrari, and Alpine. Uh, if you look beyond the top five teams, Yuki is also behind Lando Norris and Nico Hulkenberg for me. But that's accounted for in the odds. Sonoda for me is 37% to finish inside the top 10. Applied odds at two to one are 33%. Implied odds at uh, plus 225 are 31%. So even if you can get just two, 200, I think that's enough to justify betting Sonoda here. So I haven't been on Yuki, I don't think, yet so far this year, but I am more than happy based on the pace he has shown, how steady he has been. I'm more than happy to change that here and buy into Sonoda at two to one for a top 10 in Montreal. I also do a slight value in Joe Guan Yu at plus 420. It's not quite a big enough gap for me to get there, especially given Alfa Romeo has been pretty wildly inconsistent this year, but good pace for, for Guan Yu uh, and, uh, or for Joe in Barcelona. So didn't quite get there, but it's at least a consideration. If you can find longer than plus 420 on Joe Guan Yu, maybe you want to lock that one in too. But uh, to me, Best bet for Montreal is going to be Yuki Sonoda top 10, two to one at FanDuel and plus 225 you can find elsewhere. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. A lot of good stuff coming up later on this week. We'll talk some NFL on tomorrow's show on Friday. Rob Friedman, Pitching Ninja is back. Talk about some strikeout props and the two lead the day in strikeout market over at FanDuel Sportsbook. You can get all those shows, again, by subscribing to Covering the Spread and the FanDuel YouTube page. Uh, if you like what you hear, leave us a thumbs up on the FanDuel YouTube page or leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts uh, or on Spotify as well. And again, check out the U.S. Open show with Brandon Gadula from yesterday. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB bets for tonight and your F1 bets from Montreal. And we'll talk to you once again tomorrow to talk about some NFL. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 